Nestled in the northwest of Cambodia, lay Southeast Asia's largest freshwater lake. Often referred to as Great Lake, Tonlesap Lake is one of the most productive inland fisheries in the world. This lake alone supports over 3 million people and provides over 75% of Cambodia's annual fish intake and over 60% of Cambodia's protein intake. So today we have joined a tour to go and visit this lake in order to experience local culture and to see what it's like for traditional communities living on the lake. If you're new to this channel, we're Leanne and Dan, better known as the Buddy Moon. We quit our jobs two years ago to pursue our dream of traveling the world. We just crossed the border into our 10th country of this year, Cambodia, where we ticked off a lifelong dream of visiting Angkor Wat and understanding its mysteries. So we have just arrived here at one of the rivers and I think we're going to be taking one of these boats straight out into Tornlesap Lake. Apparently there are three rivers flowing straight into the Tornlesap River, excluding the Mekong River when it's rainy season, more on that later. But these are one of the rivers and this is the one that we're going to be taking straight into Tornlesap. Oh, we got to go on a sketchy bridge. Where's a wooden bridge in Asia? Somewhere. Oh my goodness. So the river's not even at its fullest peak, like it comes up to here. Wow, that's crazy. Is this our boat? Yeah. Is this Thanks, ours, hey? Hello, oh, check our driver. <laughs> Is he driver? <laughs> he is very excited to drive today. <laughs> it's the cutest little driver I've ever seen. <laughs> Super happy to be on this boat. Oh, here we go. We can actually stand on the roof. And you can see how they're actually trying to reverse the boat so that we can head forward. But it's seeming a lot more difficult. Now that's a strong lady. Oh, we are starting to turn. Oh, I think we're stuck. Does he want me to help? We got a lease. <laughs> and there we are on our way. A little bit of a mission. Leon. I don't think she can hear me. There you go. <laughs> did you see the light thing? I did. Oh my gosh, I hope we don't get rain. But how cool is this? <laughs> Everyone's sitting below and we've got this whole top deck to ourselves. Ooh. Oh, don't fall. Check this guy. Sus die. Hello. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but there's something about waters that Leanne and I absolutely love. The minute we we're on the water, that's when we we're at our most happiest. They say you get to relax and just like let your mind free the, the closer you are to a body of water, whether it's a river, the sea, a pool. And I really believe in that. That's true. Check how small that guy is. <laughs> you are, sometimes I wish I was a kid in yeah. Asia. They get to do so much stuff from a young age. <laughs> I've never seen a boat like that before. Have you seen a boat like that? No, but I think they're actually trying to load goods onto the smaller boats and he got stuck. Otherwise, they're trying to cross this little road here and didn't realize how deep the river would actually be. Well, there isn't much of a road. So right now, we're actually entering one of the floating villages here. Now, you'll see that some houses are actually floating and then other ones are built on really high stilts due to rainy season. It's crazy to actually think how high these houses are. I mean, like we here in rainy season and I know that this lake and river is not to its fullest but when it's dry they really have a long way to climb up to their house. You can see there's basically about two stories worth of stilts and only on the top one is where the house is. This is crazy. 
You can see each one has a little bit of a balcony on top and some people actually stay on the bottom when it's not too full. <laughs> Those things are incredibly loud. <laughs> yeah, you can actually see a floating house right here. Oh, we're gonna come close. Oh, that was almost. Did you see that? I did, goodness. I feel like the people riding those boats enjoy more of the sound of the boat than rather being on the boat themselves. Here comes another one. Nice speed. Check how close we are to the wires. Check at this, you can literally touch it. I'm really scared of the lightning flashes that I see every now and again because I think the biggest storm is going to come and catch up with us and I don't feel really safe on this boat with all the lightning. You can see this lady has like vegetables and supplies on her boat that she'll probably go and deliver to all the people. It's like a, a local shop on the water. They've just adapted their whole lifestyle to be able to float. There's another one. Hello, sister. It's weird to think like the normal mindset is actually to get like a shop rented out and then buy stuff so that you can sell to the people. But yeah, it's like you don't rent a shop, you need to build a boat or buy a boat. And then that is your whole life, your transport, your business, everything. It's really cool. Our guide was telling us earlier that about 60% of the people here rely on fishing alone and then another 30% on tourism and 5% of people have like small little shops and that is basically how they get their income. Oh, watch your head. Oh, goodness. <laughs> they are super low. The cabling, the electricity. <laughs> I think the rain's gonna catch up to us. I can already feel a few drops. So don't fall off the boat. I won't, or lose your cell phone. It's less rain here. <laughs> it's bucketing down. Like, I think it's like a cloud burst almost, but hopefully it will be done soon. I think we crashed. Oh, I think we actually got stuck. So we hit that boat and now we're caught. Are we stuck, eh? Yeah. Alright, so I think our rudder actually got caught to his rudder and that's why we couldn't pull away. Yo, it's really raining. Ah, oh, we're getting wet. Squeeze up, squeeze up. I can't go anymore. Squeeze up. I have like half a butt cheek on this bench. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, it's going to be terrible. <laughs> Uh, I can stand there, hey? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> we are now wet! We didn't actually pack our raincoats because yeah. we left in such beautiful weather. We weren't expecting this at all. So it tells us that no matter where you go in rainy season, pack your raincoats and your umbrellas. So while we stopped you at a place, oh, those boats are loud. They've actually got a crocodile farm here. Oh my gosh, do you see the crocodiles? Does that mean there's actually crocodiles in this river? There's a possibility. <laughs> that does not make you feel safe. <laughs> oh my gosh. Check, there they are, right there. Here's another one. I don't know if I've ever been this close to crocodiles before. I don't think I've ever been this close either. They are massive and very scary looking. Are there crocodiles in this water? No, no. no. no? So, so where did no. you get them? Uh, it's, uh, they make uh, they do the farm. So they can throw the farm up there. The farm? Yeah, the farm in the highland. But they buy, they buy small crocodiles. But it's got an opening here at the bottom. So the crocodiles can't get into there? Uh, yeah, but uh, it's fed the block. Oh, it's yeah. blocked. 
They have baby crocodiles as well. There's the baby one. But it's a baby crocodile to I can buy a baby crocodile for her. You think she does she want baby crocodile? Yeah. <laughs> two dollar. Only two dollar for baby crocodile. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So how much do you actually think an adult crocodile for sale is right now? Like you can buy one of these. Uh, like maybe I'd say like ten thousand rand. So maybe like four hundred dollars. No. Eighty dollars. It's super cheap. Eighty dollars. And people will buy them for their meat to eat it, or even the leather to make bags and stuff. But I just think that's like ridiculously cheap to buy a full crocodile wow so the reason they farm crocodiles for the meat is actually because it's a staple meal here in cambodia so other than chicken and fish and maybe pork or beef they really rely on the crocodile meat as a source of protein so from here you can actually see a view of tonle sop and you can't even see the other side of the lake that's how huge it is i think our guide was telling us that it's 30 to 33 kilometers wide, wide yeah. and like 117 kilometers long. long. That's like, how big it is. Yeah, it's like an ocean. <laughs> yeah. Oh snap, we left our GoPro on there. Gonna have some good time lapses of the boat bobbing up and down. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be some interesting footage. <laughs> I actually forgot about it. <laughs> oh, it's slippery. Is it slippery? Very slippery. Oh my gosh. Hold on, hold on. Oh! <laughs> Don't slip. Okay, let me just take the GoPro. <laughs> Hello. Are you gonna sit by me? She needed some help with looking after the baby, so I guess Leanne's the designated one. I have absolutely no issues with that. He looks super happy and chill to just sit by me for us. He's not like crying or anything. Sister! Sister! So the original plan was actually to stop over at the village that we drove past earlier and explore a little bit of that and as well as go through... Woo! Woo! <laughs> Woo! Woo! I need to hold on here was then only to go to the floating forest and then go through Tonle Sap Lake in order to watch a sunset but because it rained we're going to be doing it in reverse so this Tonle Sap Lake is actually about 8 to 11 meters deep and this is only during rainy season and then in the dry season it's only about one and a half to three meters deep and one thing that's very interesting about this lake is that it actually has an inflow and an outflow river which is the exact same river so basically when it's raining the Tonle Sap gets filled from the Mekong River then you have the inflow river going into the Tonle Sap Lake and then in dry season it actually flows back out into the Mekong River insane it's pretty choppy up here Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Jim Nam, you're safe there. Yeah. You're safe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're not going to. Woo. <laughs> I think we're already going in. We're basically out here for about five minutes. I think the rain took up a lot of our time. Well, at least we got to see the Tonle Sap Lake because it's already starting to drizzle again. looking after the baby. I'm still on baby duty. So how big was that lake? I swear those waves are almost about to come over here. We were like rocking sideways so much. He's actually getting so comfortable with the water that he's starting to fall asleep on the end lap. <laughs> so cute. He's asleep. Yeah. So shh. I really like it. Okay, bye sweetheart. I'm gonna go do the rest of the activities while you just babysit. <laughs> I feel bad waking him up. My <laughs> owner. It was a pleasure. Okay. <laughs> He's tired. Okay. Now that Leanne's officially off babysitting duties, 
I think we can go through the oh hold on I'm through sure. the floating forest. I absolutely love being on babysitting duty. <laughs> so How much for the boat? Yeah, ten for two. Sorry? Ten. Ten dollar. Yes, How much real? Forty real. Forty thousand. Yes, there we go. <laughs> So here we are now going to go towards the floating forest or that's what they call it and I think it's just going to be a soft enjoyable relaxing experience because I don't think our guide or our boat driver skipper can actually speak English. It's just really beautiful to be able to just go through all of these trees. So relaxing. Oh, man. <laughs> so I'm guessing during dry season this water is not here or there's very little and that's why it's still a forest or maybe just because of the amount of trees. Oh we're gonna crash. Small bump. I see here they actually have some nets. I think they actually use it to catch some fish. Or crabs even. Mud crabs. Oh, hold on. <laughs> no, it's <just> one. <laughs> no need to say sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so these floating forests are so important because in the rainy season the fish swim upstream and then they become the breeding ground for the fish to come and lay their eggs. You can kind of see here there's nets and I think this is like a huge fishing farm maybe to capture all the fish once they've laid their eggs. This for fish? Uh, fish? Oh, not grass. Ah, for oh, fish. If you eat. <laughs> oh, it's dodging trees. It's amazing to think that during like, the dry season, this is like completely flat and then during the wet season the water comes up so much and apparently the Mekong supplies 60% of the water in like this lake system and then I think the other 40% is from actual rain so it just shows you how much rain it rains in rainy season. I think they're actually kind of like following a route around because it seems like we're really getting back to where we started. Susdai! Susdai! I think he's probably going to go get some fish there or maybe some mud crabs. Was enjoying that so much. Arkun. Arkun. <laughs> He's nice and awake now. So this driver actually has like ropes tied to a rudder and as well as the engine and the ropes are like going on the side of the boat in order to turn the rudder and then by his feet he's also got the acceleration and like the reverse gears of the engine so I think the ropes there are tied towards the engine it is just like a DIY type of project but it works I think actually one of the ropes actually pull up the rudder in case it's too shallow or if you want to put it further down you can actually make it deeper Oh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so we just stopped here at the village in order just to check it out for about 10 minutes before we head back. Rain took up a lot of our time. So here is uh, the island yeah? and this village that we call Kapong Klok is made from here. And right now that we have uh, 1,012 family that live in here. Some year is a very big flooding, the water up to this high. Yeah? You know, up to uh, that high the water yeah, goes? Yeah, this high. Yeah. Wow. So like a 2000. Just to give you perspective, that's how low it is right now. Hi guys. Uh, do you want to get donate some pencils? Yeah. 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 yeah, we've got loads as in and then this is left. So that's oh. what they're going to ask you to give to the kids. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, we can give some to the kids. That was nice. Yeah, that was nice of her. So I think they're allowing you to buy some pencils just so you can give to the kids here in the villages. Yeah, maybe it's for you. Thank you. Well, we didn't really get to walk around the village. I think the village is normally the first stop on the tour, but because of the rain, we weren't able to do that. But we just stopped now, had a look at a temple, and now we're going to be off. It sucks that we didn't, weren't able to do that, because I really was looking forward to it, but sometimes you just don't win. I guess coming here in rainy season in Asia, there are some trade-offs. <laughs> I found some little kids on the boat that I can actually give the pencils to. 
Well, at least we managed to give some kids some pencils. It's a shame. <laughs> and at least we were able to see a little bit of what the village life is on here in the terms of like how high their, their houses are. Like, I still can't get over yeah, how high they crazy. are. Just shows how much water there still is to come. Yeah, it's crazy. I guess that's the end of our tour. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe and maybe even consider leaving a super thanks. But until then, we'll see you in the next video.